Hello, everyone. I'm BCAP. I'm here at the Institute for Protein Design in Seattle. Folded players, you probably know me for forgetting to post objective details on puzzles uh, and for screwing up puzzles in general. It's also been a long time since I've made a blog post, and I'm very sorry. Uh, I'm here with Ian H. He is my colleague here at the Institute. He is helping me put together these video updates. We'd like to share more what we do with Folded Players. I know we've been very bad about sharing behind the scenes what we do, the research that we do here, um, the types of experiments that we do with Folded Players designs and, and the work in general. These are meant to be more informal than a nice blog post um, and something that I can just walk in and give a brief update and Ian will put it all together for me. Um, please give us feedback. Um, this is new. We're trying it. We don't know where it's going to go. We don't know what will work, what won't. Um, tell us, do you prefer this to written blog posts? Um, what information would you like to know? Um, what information do you not care to know? First on the agenda, um, news. The Foldit team is growing. This is good news. Um, this next quarter, I will be mentoring an undergrad. We have an excellent undergrad coming to us, Neil Gupta. Um, I should know his Foldit username. Neil is great. He's going to be helping me set up some folded puzzles and analyzing the results from some folded puzzles. We'd like to get him started on uh, forming some of his own experiments. We are also working on hiring a new developer. I'm sure you guys all saw we had a job posting a few months ago. We posted on the website. Um, that's still ongoing. Hopefully, we'll have new updates for you soon. We are very excited to expand the Foldit team because we have lots of things that we'd like to do, as I'm sure you all know. Um, and. Uh, I'm sure you guys also have lots of things that you'd like from us. Um, next, we have some puzzle updates. So in September, we saw a lot of symmetric design puzzles, and we saw a lot of BCOV's IL-7R binder design puzzles, and some revisited puzzles. But aside from that, it's been a pretty um, straightforward month. In symmetry, briefly, we're trying to watch the amount of hydrophobicity that we have in folded designs. Um, from testing we did a long time ago of initial symmetric designs, um, part of the problem we saw is that designs with too many hydrophobic residues, they tend to aggregate. And usually this happens, especially with designs that have huge interfaces that are completely nonpolar, that are completely hydrophobic. These are the orange residues in folded. So, uh, you've noticed one of the things we've been doing is, is we've been limiting the interface size between symmetric units. Um, and this is in part to try to improve how, how these designs behave in the lab. We'll maybe get back to this um, another time, but for now we're, we're looking forward to, to digging in deeply to, to the latest designs. Quick update on B-Cuffs puzzles. We are in the home stretch. The final round will be round 18, I believe. Um, then BCOV will order all of the folded designs alongside a few thousand of his own designs from a, a computational protocol. He didn't sit down and design thousands of proteins and fold it. Hopefully we will get those genes ordered and um, can maybe even start experiments before the year's end. We're really excited about this. This is the first high throughput experiment we've done with folded player designs. In the past, uh, just due to the limitations of low throughput experiments, we've only been able to test small numbers of folded designs where we, we basically, we can't afford to test um, the wild ideas and the maybe less promising ideas that are still very interesting. Uh, we'll get to see some data about every design from every folded player in these puzzles. The experiment itself will take a few months. Um, but hopefully uh, sometime early 2020, uh, we should be able to return to Foldit players um, actual binding data about how well your designs bind to the IL-7R target. Uh, just a quick lab update for you on the symmetric designs. For most of the summer, we have been testing symmetric designs from Foldit players. These have been only the, the C2 symmetries, so just where two identical monomer units that are designed to come together. Each of these units should fold independently, and then they should bind one another. When we run experiments or when we analyze them in the lab, um, they should behave as this, this well-behaved dimer. So over the summer, we've been, uh, I, I ordered and we've been testing about, um, about 30 of these designs. Um, the experiments are still ongoing, but it looks like about 20 to 30 percent of these seem to be well-behaved dimers that perform, um, that behave as we expect them to. Most excitingly, uh, we've gotten a couple of protein crystals from these designs. We do not yet have crystal structures, but the, cr the proteins themselves have uh, grown into very, very tiny crystals, 
and we have sent these crystals to a very, very powerful light source down in Berkeley. Um, and they shoot very high intensity x-rays at these crystals, which form diffraction patterns and give us lots of lots of data about the structure of the proteins within those crystals. We are still processing all of that data. Um, it is turning out to be very, very tricky. Hopefully, uh, we will have a high resolution crystal structure of at least one of these folded designed dimers very soon. So th these crystal structures are very exciting because uh, they basically, they let us know that the designs that you made form exactly as you intended when you designed them and fold it. So we also have a side project, maybe. Uh, some people in the Baker Lab, a couple of postdocs, Flo and Danny, have been interested in designing protein heterodimers. Uh, so these are different than the homodimers that folded players have been des designing, where each of the units is identical. Uh, Flo and Danny want to design protein dimers uh, of two different proteins. Each have beta strands, beta sheets, um, and when they come together, the two beta sheets kind of, they, they match up to, to form one continuous beta sheet. And they also had some other requirements. They were looking for proteins. Uh, these, these units should each have a, a helix um, at the N terminus or the C terminus uh, so that it can be easily fused to another helical bundle protein or something like that. It just so happened that folded players had designed a ton of these structures in previous puzzles. Um, we've even written a paper on it, which I'm sure you are all well aware of. Um, so I sent some of the folded protein models to Flo and Danny and say, hey, I think these designs look like kind of the thing that you're looking for. Maybe you could take these folded monomers and redesign them so that they come together in a dimer, a heterodimer. Um, so Flo and Danny did this. They, uh, they took a bunch of folded player designs and they randomly docked them against one another and tried designing uh, just the residues at the interface where these two proteins would come together. They ordered and tested a bunch of them and lo and behold, some of the, uh, some of the heterodimers that they ordered based on folded player designs um, seemed to form heterodimers in solution. They seemed to perform exactly as they were designed. Um, even more exciting, they recently got a crystal structure of one of these heterodimers and it is spot on with the design. So these proteins behave exactly as predicted and exactly as folded players originally designed them. This just in, uh, after we recorded this video, we heard from the Siegel Lab at UC Davis. They have updates with the aflatoxin puzzle, which we are restarting. At this point, you've seen the blog post online and we have a new puzzle. Uh, we're very excited to get back into this aflatoxin business. We have uh, great sponsorship from Mars and Thermo Fisher um, and the Siegel Lab is, is planning some more experiments with folded player designs. So please check out the aflatoxin blog post and the new puzzle. That's all we have for this report. Uh, if you're watching on the Foldit website, please leave a comment with your feedback. Thanks for playing, and we'll see you next month.